Hey guys, Reaping Fire here, and today I'm going to be showing you, you know, how to record your screen for free. So, uh, yeah, the best software that I have found for free, well, there's actually two decent ones, but the one that I'm going to be showing you here that I believe is the best, and I even say, I, I'll even venture to say it's better than Fraps, is called OBS. Now, uh, OBS is the acronym, of course, the actual name of the, the software is called the Open Broadcaster Software, or or broadcasting software or something like that but it's still in its beta and it's just great to use I highly recommend it to anyone who's you know starting off YouTube like me because it's very great only issue is it's a little bit difficult to figure out on your own so that's why I decided to make this video and teach you exactly how to use it once you install it so well and even how to install it so here's how you install it you go to Google and you search OBS very easy to do um, the first link that pops up should be it. It's the obsproject.com. You select that. It has a very nice website. And all you have to do is click download. When you click download, it'll take you to the sourceforge.net website. And you just wait for it, your download to start. And uh, when it does, I already had it down here once. It'll be down here. It'll download. And when it downloads, you just click it and you install it. And it's a very great installer. Uh, I mean, if there's anything that it needs um, to work that your computer doesn't have, it'll let you know. Typically, if your computer's all up to date with all of the software, you won't have an issue with it. It also installs for both a 64-bit and a 32-bit at the same time, so it works on both. You won't have an issue with that if you're running a if you're running on Windows Vista or XP or something, and you're only at a 32-bit. It's installing that for you. If you have a 64-bit, it installs that for you. I actually believe it installs both on your computer, whether or not you have it. So uh, it's great because you have the, the software you need. Now, once you install it and you open it up, it'll look a lot like... Hang on, let me open it up. <laughs> it'll look like this. Now, obviously something won't be recording on it like I have, but you'll have your scenes and you'll have your sources. Now, scenes will just have one scene underneath it called scene, and your sources will be empty. That you're going to want to fix. Uh, this is actually how it captures your screen and knows what to capture on your screen. So basically, just having one scene will be fine uh, from what I've seen. But uh, scenes are basically, you can have different scenes, which will, all that does is pretty much makes a new file of sources for you to select. So say you wanted a scene specifically just for monitor recording. You can make that and just have different kind of options under your sources for monitor recording or whatever. Or maybe, uh, I really don't see a point for making other scenes. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Because it's your sources that are actually what you select that will uh, help you choose a specific thing to record. Say, like right now I'm using monitor capture which uh, records my whole screen. Or just, you can even set a region once you go under uh, the properties of monitor capture. But then I also have Minecraft, which actually only will record my Minecraft window, even if I have it minimized. I mean, yeah, if I have it minimized, the screen will be black because it's only trying to pick up the recording of the Minecraft window. If I have it, you know, smaller, it'll only pick it up as a smaller thing, on, and then it would be bordered by black, which would be the rest of my monitor. Or if I have it full screen, it will... Uh, or maximize if you don't play on full screen. It'll only show it'll it'll show the Minecraft thing. So you don't have to worry about like minimizing it and then having something there that you don't want people to see when you're recording. It's very helpful that way. And uh, yeah, so you can just right click on scenes to delete the or rename the one that it's already there. It doesn't make a difference what you do. And to add one, you just right click here. And once you add one, it, you'll just put in the name and yeah, you'll be set with those scenes. Then uh, under that scene, you'll be able to add multiple sources. And the same thing, you right click, add, uh, then it gives you some options. You have window capture, which will only capture uh, a specific selected window. There's monitor capture, which will capture the whole monitor, like I'm doing the whole screen. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what image, image slideshow, global source, or text does. Um, but I'm sure there's an easy way to look that up. 
video capture device would be specifically just a webcam or something. It would record that. And then game capture will... It, basically, it should be called application capture, I think, because it will only capture a specific application. For example, I'll click it and show you what I mean. Uh, please enter a name. You'll enter whatever name in. Hit OK. Then it'll open up this window. Uh, you select an application, like I said. Uh, so you would pick, you would want whatever application you're using open. You would select that, and it will only record that application, like with my Minecraft videos. And yeah, so that's that. Now, after you have that, you're basically set to record. There's very little other things to do in the settings, but just in case there is something you want to do in the settings, I will show you how to do that. So you click on settings here. Uh, down in the bottom right corner, there's the settings options. Or you can go up top and select settings there. And, uh, yeah, so you select settings. And under general, it just has, you know, the language and I don't know what setting profile is, but uh, my guess is that this is um, settings profiles. My, my guess is that you can have different settings set up for different types of recording and just select one and then do your settings there and save it under that. So you have save your file there and you can switch between different settings. So say you don't want to, you want some days you might want to record in HD, other days you might not. So you have different settings set for those. That would be the setting profile. Uh, encoding. I, I really don't know exactly what this does. I say, I would say leave it as its default unless you know you have a really good computer then i would set it as you see i have it now which is the quality balance all the way up uh the max bit rate I have at 6000 use custom buffer size and put that to 1000 if you know you have a really good computer uh the same would go for the audio encoding uh have it where i have it here with the bit rate at 320 and everything i'm pretty sure this is the default down here with the audio encoding though now I'll go under the broadcast settings. No, I would not like to save my changes. This basically uh, is where you can choose whether you want to live stream, uh, just have it save the file you're recording, or do both. So right now I have it, the mode set just to save my recording, not live stream. But if you want to live stream, select the live stream mode. Then it allows it allows you to select the streaming service. It gives you a list of options here you know there's YouTube twitch daily motion you know those are the three I know of I don't know any of the other ones here but you can live stream but also while you're live streaming you could also save to file so you can uh, select that now with a save to file they kind of do it a little differently than I've seen uh, other recorders do where you just have to select a folder you actually have to when you uh, type this in you actually have to select what you're going to want it to save the recording name as so mine's just set to video uh dot flv because i have it save, saving as a flash file but you can also choose to have that save as a, an mp4 which i will be showing you in a second here but you would just hit browse and you would select the file where you want your videos to record for example mine is video recording save it as type you have the choice of an mp4 or a flash video file uh the difference is and let me make this very clear mp4 i've noticed is it allows you to uh actually if you're going to be editing a file i say go with mp4 because most editing softwares do not recognize a flash file you can upload to youtube with a flash file but most editing softwares do not recognize it like sony vegas windows movie maker i've noticed that they do not recognize it uh i'm pretty sure there's ways that you can add a codec to those but that's more work, and I'm not sure exactly what you need to do to do that. But MP4 works on most editing softwares, and uh, yeah, the only difference that I've heard that is between those other than that is that the Flash video file, uh, if you're recording and say your computer shuts down on you, well, or power goes out or something and you don't have a battery backup supply or whatever, uh, the Flash video file will actually not corrupt or anything it'll just cut off the recording where it goes off but the recording will still be saved with an mp4 the whole video file will be ruined and you will not be able to use it that's where i've heard the differences between the two 
Now, the chances of you having an issue like a power outage or something, though, are so low that you may as well go with the MP4 if you're deciding to edit it. I have not been editing my videos because I do not have a decent editing software. Therefore, I've been using the Flash video file just in case, you never know. And it's been working fine for me. I, uh, I actually upload to YouTube so fast, like, when I'm done recording a video, because it works uh, where it actually is recording, it's actually saving the file as you're recording, uh, it's just right when I'm done recording, I go straight to YouTube, it takes maybe for a 20 minute video, it takes me 20 minutes to upload, then maybe another 8 for it to uh, do whatever else it wants to do after it's uploaded, and then it's released to the public, you know. So, I mean, so far the Flash video file has worked fine for me. I haven't really tested the MP4, but I'm sure that works great too. But you select it, whichever one you want to record as, and then you type in whatever you want the video to be called. And I save all mine as Flash video files, which you can see. And then the file name, by default I have it set to video, so basically what it does is it will save it as video, and then every time it, you make a new video, it'll just add a number to it. So it goes video one, video, video one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. Uh, it'll do the same thing for, you know, the MP4s. So that's how you save, pick the location for you to save and everything. Now, no, I would not like to change my, uh, my things. Now, the resolution. I recommend you use whatever resolution your monitor is. Figure out that, right click on your desktop, and go to screen resolution. I'm using Windows 7, it might be different on a different computer, but normally it's under screen resolution uh, or personalize. You can find it either way. And if it's under personalize, chances are it's going to be under your display options. Uh, screen resolution. And it'll tell you what your screen resolution is set to, whatever you have your screen resolu resolution set to, which normally would be the recommended. That's what I would re recommend you record in. Now, uh, as far as audio goes, you're going to want to make sure your desktop audio device is whatever speakers you have set up, whatever you're hearing your sound come out, that's what you're going to want your desktop audio device to be set to. And your microphone, you're going to want to make sure you have the proper microphone uh, selected. You can choose to push to talk. I do not use that because I don't need to. And I like to use uh, push to talk for my TeamSpeak. So if I'm recording and using TeamSpeak at the same time, I might want to be saying something and not have the people I'm talking with in TeamSpeak here. So I just leave this without push to talk and use push to talk for TeamSpeak. That way I can do things like that. Uh, and then you can have, you know, hotkeys for muting and unmuting and other things. So I have that set up. And that's that depends on your personal preference there. Advanced, I uh, I don't know exactly what these uh, things here do, but from what I've researched, if you have a fast computer, you'll want to uh, uh, keep the CPU presets to very uh, very fast or higher. But if you have a slower computer, you might want to actually go lower with the CPU preset to maybe fast or medium. If you know that your computer has a hard time keeping up with your gameplay and whatnot. And then there's the microphone noise gate, which is actually uh, very nice because, sorry, for a second I thought I wasn't recording. I was like, oh shoot, did I actually just make this whole video without recording? <laughs> but um, basically, the microphone noise gate will cut off sound when you're not talking, like under under a certain decibel will not be heard into your recording which is great so say you have a dog barking in the back if it's not uh hitting a certain decibel that you have set here it will not be heard so you can tell like if i stop talking you hear all sound gets cut off even like when i'm talking i'm sure you can hear like a little fan in the background or something uh just because that's the way my mic likes to make background noise i guess but uh, when I stop talking, it gets completely silent. And that's because of this uh, noise gate here. I have it set for its defaults because they seem to work very well for me. And uh, yeah, you just have to check 
enable noise gate and it'll work that way. So that's about it for this uh, software here. I hope that you know it helps you and you can actually start recording videos now or you can get rid of that you know old software that you use that just gave you headaches because when you're done recording you had to wait a half hour just to edit it because then it had to do some kind of rendering or whatever because I know I had that issue and when I found this I was so happy. Uh, I have not experienced any viruses from this. I use I've che checked it with a couple different virus softwares, Avas and Malwarebytes. And if you don't have Malwarebytes, I recommend getting it because even though Avas wasn't picking up viruses on my computer, Malwarebytes found like 200. So, uh, yeah, consider using Malwarebytes if you absolutely need to get a virus off your computer. Uh, I hope this video helped you guys out, and if you enjoyed it, please, you know, don't be afraid to hit that like and subscribe button, and comment if you wish. I will read the comment, and I will definitely get back to any questions you have. Uh, so if you have any questions, you know, don't be afraid to leave a comment. So, that's it for this video. Until next time.